Hey, this is Jim Sens over at Home Waters. We're gonna be tying up this little sculpin pattern for swinging for trout. One of my favorite flies right now. It's unweighted, which is awesome. So you just need a sink tip to help get it down and I'll show you how to tie it up. It's gonna be awesome. All right, now you're gonna to wanna to start this about two thirds of the way down with your thread base. Just leave a little bit of room up there because that's where the composite loop's gonna go. So we wanna not crowd that. There's not going to be any weight on this fly, so you're going to want to fish it with a sink tip. And it's probably one of my favorite swinging patterns right now for sculpin. I just think it's super pretty, it's simple, it's fun. It's a fun tie, it's fun to fish, fun to cast, all the funs. And that's kind of the point of all this. See how messy I made all that? Not a big deal. You're just going to wrap right over it anyway. Just go for it. If anything sticks out afterwards and you want to be really picky, which I usually do, I'll just take my scissors and trim off the butt ends that are sticking out. This is a fly for myself. This isn't to impress anybody. Right about there with the body. Just wrap back over it a little bit. Pull this back, wrap it. Cut that off. And then our next thing is going to be some mink and olive. And you want this? about one and a half times the length of the whole fly. Take that back, I forgot. Red ice stub. Then we'll do that part. Forgot my little dubby ball to keep it from following up on the hook. Okay. Now, we can do the mink. Want to be... Just the very tip of this. See how my thread wants to jump the one way? Spin your bobbin the opposite way you want it, and it won't do that anymore. Hopefully. There we go. Mink, or at least this mink, has a little bit tougher skin, so it's hard to get it to bend. Just like so. Now we're going to add in our rubber legs. These are super cool olive speckled. Love these legs. We're just going to do two. And I just hook them on under the thread, pull them over to my side, wrap them over. Those are done. And I like to pin them back out of my way because silicone legs and composite loops don't always get along the radius. bit of ice stub pheasant tail. Just pull a bit out. This is going to be your base. I like to break it in half. I just throw it down. It doesn't have to be that pretty. Just have to get it down there. All right. And then this is UV polar chenille in copper. About 80-20 on the line. You want it as much that way as you can get it and still get some thread on it. So you get some length on it. Take your scissors and kind of work things around, like so. Perfect. And then we're gonna use a little bit of STS Triolobal dubbing in olive. I'm gonna cut this in half as well. Just lay that down on it, fold it over like a little sandwich. And let that sit there. And now we're going to do our fly. Okay. Let's run some thread up here just to give us a little bit of thread base for our composite loop, which is our next phase. Now we're going to do our composite loop. So with this, this is ADOT Phoebus. So you're going to want to do a double dubbing loop so that it doubles up that thread and makes it stronger. Run this forward. A little bit of dubbing wax on it. Helps everything stick in. A little dubbing spinner. And this is that composite that we just made. Just spread it out gently. Pinch it, spin it. Once you feel the spins hitting your finger, you can let go and just let it do its thing. 
pick it out, get anything out that doesn't want to be in there anymore. You'll lose a bit of dubbing and that's totally okay. There's going to be more than enough left still in the loop. And then take your toothbrush, brush it. This just gets rid of everything that's loose or most of the stuff that's loose. Pull it all back, wrap forward, just take your time, put one right in front of the next as best as you can. All right, now that we're at it, the end of it, wrap your thread around it twice. One, two, three, I'm up at the eye and then I fold this over. I run my thread over the top of the dubbing loop before I cut it off. Helps create a head and also make sure that everything's locked, locked in there. And this is a good time to clean up around your eye if you got anything in the way. <laughs> and this is also a really good time to brush out your dubbing and get this composite loop all going where you want to go because here in a second I'm going to put some jungle cock on this thing. Jungle cock is going to make everything about this fly so much cooler. I don't know why Jungle Cock does that to every fly. It's just magic and I love it. It's not super easy to get. You gotta hunt down some guy that knows some guy generally, but when you find it, get a whole cape and love it and baby it. Here's two eyes. I'm gonna strip off all of this little fluff on the ends right below where that what they call the eye starts. See that like that? I'm going to do that to the other one as well. And I like to turn my vise so it's flat when I do this part. And I just tie it in right at that base little line. Just bend that part over like that and let that side sit. Let it chill. And then you come over and do the same thing on this side. Same spot, same everything. And then take your tag in, pull it over. Okay. Now, before I cut those ends off or anything, I like to do a whip finish and just finish off this part of the fly so I don't have to worry about anything coming undone. And it's just good. All this dubbing and stuff is cool. We'll get that out of the way. I'm gonna use some UV glue on this head here in a sec, but first I like to take these little stems and get them off. And I'll grab my silicone legs, trim those to length. Trout love this fly on the McKenzie, the Metolius, even Deschutes, anywhere. And I like this to be, let's see if I can do it on your side. So I've got my tail that ends right there. I like to have this end right before my tail does, right about there. And they'll just kind of kick around. I like to make sure that one on each side is a little shorter than the other. And then you take your UV glue and your bodkin. This one I can load up the head nicely as long as I don't get it in the eye even if you do get it in the eye it's pretty easy to knock it out with your bodkin after you've dried it and it generally doesn't disrupt the head either so that part's kind of nice I have to say the inspiration for me tying this video is all because of Courtney as well I'm gonna just blame Courtney in every fly tying video <laughs> I do from now on it's just gonna be a thing <laughs> <laughs> All right, so blast it with the UV torch, get that stuff to cure. And this fly is ready to fish. You can brush it out a bit more if you want, but in general, you can just take it to the river, go have some fun, fish it, swing it, get some trout on it, take pictures of it and send them to me. Let me see them.